Hey everyone, and welcome at the Humans and AI, a show by the Global AI community. Every episode, we invite a human to discuss what he is doing in the field of AI. Welcome, Hemant. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Well, Hemant, we would like to get to know you a little bit better by asking one maybe tricky question. Mm -hmm. If you wouldn't be working in the tech industry, what kind of job do you think you would be doing? I would, I would likely be a teacher. Okay. I have two kids. Uh, one is a six-year-old and another who's a teenager. Uh, I feel very competent teaching my six-year-old and for, for my teenager, I, I need to do some studying, but I really like it when when I learn something and I can teach it to her. Oh, that's really nice. Like imagine maybe in your job also you need to explain things quite often. Explain and learn both. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> okay, Hemant, what exactly do you and your team do within Microsoft? I work on Azure Machine Learning Service. Uh, it's a service designed for data scientists who want to take their uh, AI all the way from training to production and back. So uh, as part of this team, I work on MLOps area, uh, supporting uh, different aspects which are required for taking AI to production. These include model management. So we have a model registry where when you train a model, you bring that model there. And then from there, you can use it in many different ways, uh, train again or uh, productionize it. We support model monitoring, which allows you to basically understand how your models are behaving when you're putting them out to production. We also support batch scoring, which is to inference large amounts of data at scale, uh, focusing on the efficiency of, uh, of, of the compute resources required to inference these large data sets. Okay, so every detail and the journey of a data scientist. Yeah, yeah. And what is your job specifically within the, the team? I serve two, two ha I wear two hats. Uh, one is uh, as a manager. I, uh, I understand basically the business goals uh, and our customers and what we need to build for them and then help my team uh, shape that into the product that yeah. we bring to our customers. Okay, quite interesting. Now, what did you, what specifically brought you into the field of AI? Yeah, so AI has, has been exploding off late. Uh, um, if, if I reflect back on my journey, uh, I started at Microsoft about 16 years ago. Oh, wow, it's quite and a while already. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, through this journey, it's been mostly in Azure. Uh, started building uh, at the lowest layers of Azure, building the networking stack with software load balancer, V1, <laughs> back in 2010. And uh, from there, basically, I then, uh, then went to do data, uh, so I built the NoSQL database called Cosmos DB. Some of you may be familiar with that. Of course. <laughs> and so uh, I was part of the journey that scaled at 100x in the time I was there. And starting from 2021, I started seeing a lot of interest in basically AI. And, and not just interest, but actually making it to production, making it to interesting use cases. And that's what made me think about moving to AI. Okay, very interesting. Any use case specifically that you really enjoy? Uh, well, the assistive use cases are magical uh, right now. I think, I mean, GitHub Copilot was kind of first mind-blowing use case for me. Uh, as a developer, it's uh, hugely assistive when, uh, for example, I don't know a language. I can actually still code productively without spending a couple of days struggling with uh, with my editor, as well as jumping back and forth between Stack Overflow and uh, and the editor. Uh, so GitHub Copilot was quite magical as a developer for me. And then from there, went on to see like what we saw this week in the new Bing. Uh, I mean, I'm super excited to see what our customers do. So yeah, every, there's a lot of things going on in the AI industry. Where do you personally think this is going to? So I'm super excited. I can see visibility to maybe the next couple of years, uh, but the pace of acceleration is is huge. And so many more people, many more, much more imaginative people than me 
are probably going to bring AI in many different ways. But the way I see it as assistive technologies using AI uh, will continue to grow. Uh, Copilot was one example. We see it every day in auto completions becoming smarter and smarter in, in us being able to write paragraphs from a blank slate. Uh, in being able to compose emails super fast. Uh, I think it's just accelerating in, in being able to both consume information uh, because AI can distill it as the, as the Bing, uh, uh, Bing demonstrations show, as well as to generate content. Both sides are going to progress quite fast over the next few years. Okay. So it's really going to impact your lives. Yeah, I, I can't wait to see the impact in terms of just not having to pay attention to semantics, but to the message I want to communicate. And uh, also to be able to consume things that are actually much more distilled as opposed to processing a vast amount of data myself, leveraging AI to do that. So if you look back to the industry that you were talking about in, the, in my first question at teaching, so the education industry, um, how do you think that will impact? Well, how will AI will impact the education industry? Yeah, uh, I mean, AI is going to have, I think, a huge impact on, on teaching, on the way we learn things. Um, as specialized AI knows a lot more about specific area that I'm trying to learn. Say I'm trying to learn a foreign language or I'm trying to learn math at, a, at, at the next grade level. Now, how, like today the way teaching works is there's a teacher who, develop, uh, who delivers a, a lecture that is very uniform across all students in the class. We do some exercises then progress at relatively similar paces because all of us are learning the same content. How does that change when the content can become individualized? When basically AI can help us probe, probe us and figure out where we are, what are the gaps in our understanding, the specific gaps, and deliver content customized to fill those gaps. How fast does learning develop? How fast does teaching get? And then how do we learn new subjects altogether? Uh, I think it's, it's going to be very exciting. And the role of teacher is going to be mainly to, to I think, understand where different students are and help the gaps which AI can't because we are the ultimate producers still. And I don't see that changing ever. Okay, thank you very much for that thought and for your time, Hemant. It yeah. was uh, nicely, nice talking to you. Likewise. And uh, we hope you meet another time again. Thank you so much.